So my name is Darren Fink. I'm with Transfiguring Adoption, and um, where Transfiguring Adoption seeks to create media or seek out resources to help nurture and grow foster families and adoptive families. Um, and we recently, I guess not too recently, maybe a month or so ago, came across uh, a website called Foster Garden. And uh, I have Nick Segan here, and he's gonna be telling us a little bit about this website. And I think Foster Garden. on your uh, website, you have a YouTube or a video that talks about what Foster Garden is. And in that, you kind of described a drawer. Can you, right. you remember that? Can you tell me about the drawer? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. It came up at the um, conference as well. When we we had conference uh, at, at foster parent conferences, I always um, look at people and I say, so you know, um, where do you keep your drawer? And they look at me with a puzzled look, and I'm like, oh, you know, the drawer I'm talking about, the one with all your forms and medical forms and DOCs and and uh, you know, only foster parents to understand all these acronyms, but. Um, it's it's a never-ending battle of paperwork, sending the paperwork to the caseworker, to the doctor, to the lawyer, getting reports from courts, the guests, oh, it's just an absolute mess. And everyone has a nightmare drawer that they're going to sort one day and put into a neat little uh, cabinet, all organized with tabs and folders. And then there's reality. Um, as foster parents, we don't have the time um, that we need to really get a handle on that level of organization. And unfortunately, um, who ends up suffering is our placements because... So uh, we've talked about the drawer and that's I think one of the one of the things where it's we're just trying to keep up with things and things are a mess. Right. So how, can, can you ta tell me a little bit more specifically, someone goes on to fostergarden.com um, and they see your service. How, how is how is fostergarden.com going to um, literally address those problems? So, um, it, you know, one thing we don't want to get confused with is just a simple cloud storage. Um, there's a lot of cloud storage services out there, and that is not what we are. Um, you know, anybody can scan a document and send it to a certain location and keep their own files and folders. You, what you're going to end up with is a big digital mess drawer instead of a, a analog one. And we don't want to. We don't want to do that. So, what the system does is it allows you to um, create um, a foster child profile. So you go in and you actually, you know, register your account. It only takes a few minutes. Um, then you go in, you create um, your agency. You put your contact information in. Um, you create a social worker. You put the social worker information in, and and we try to keep it so that. Um, you know, the least amount of information is required as possible. You can always go back and keep it as detailed as you like, but that mindset was important to us because, you know, we don't want to have every field required. Um, and then it really helps speed up the data input process. But, you know, you get your minimal information in and you create your foster child profile. At the end of the registration process, you answer a series of questions. If you've ever done your taxes online, and I think a lot of people do these days, it asks you a series of questions. You know, have you... Um, started a business this year, um, do you have, do you drive a vehicle for work, those kind of things. Well, we ask similar questions at the end of the registration. Is this child new into foster care? How old is this child? Does the child currently have a medical on file? You know, um, you know, and, and, and more so, we also explain those requirements in the question. You know, in most jurisdictions, the foster child is required to have an intake medical within the first 30 days. Does your agency require that? Check your handbook. If so, pick a date by which this needs to be completed. And, and you know, it allows flexibility because let's say in your jurisdiction it's 30 days, but in my jurisdiction it's 45. You get to assign dates to those, and they're not hard arbitrary dates of when your doctor's appointment is. These are reminder dates, and these reminders live in Foster Garden. They um, allow you to, it kind of creates like a, a static pin that you can you can come back and you can either attach documents to, you can attach uh, photos to, um, and then you also can make notes on those reminders, but it, it helps create a work list. And that's the first thing in the, in the, on the top screen is you see, you'll see your reminders work list. And it gives you a breakdown then of what is all required for your foster child. You know, do you need to enroll them in school? Do they need a dentist appointment? Do they need uh, a 24-month well child visit? Do they need, you know, do they have parenting time uh, scheduled? Do you have to have a GAL visit you at the home? Um, I mean, it goes on and on and on. Uh, do, do your, and even um, more than that, uh, there's even licensing reminders too. Do you need to have your pets vaccinated? Do you need to have your additional training? And so 
when we have this reminder work list built, then you get a nice, easy to work list knowing how many days left you have to complete things and the system can send you email reminders and let you know, hey, this special reimbursement is going to expire in 30 days. You need to get this to your social worker. Um, and that's where the real benefit of Foster Garden is. It gives you a nice, digestible list of information, a workable list that you can go through and then um, also attach that documentation and inherently keep it organized by working this list. So Nick, what I hear you saying is then basically Foster Garden, for, for a first time foster parent, it's going to be kind of a, a, a load off their mind because they're going to go through this, it's going to give them reminders, and even for the most seasoned foster parent, this system, this, this program is going to be just, it's going to keep everything in line for you. It's going to give you reminders so you can do things like work with the trauma that the kid is dealing with and not worry about did I remember to enroll them for school or take them to the doctor? You were talking about um, caseworkers and, and even helping the caseworkers. Can you talk to, to us a little bit about the collaboration um, that, that the program offers? Like, I'm a foster parent, I sign up for Foster Garden. Yeah. How, how does that help my caseworker? Okay, well, there's a couple issues with that. So what we created um, was the the web portal feature. And the reason, part of the reason for that is, um, is uh, you know, I work in healthcare IT, like I mentioned. Uh, are you familiar with HIPAA? Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I think everyone's familiar with HIPAA. It was a big deal uh, back in 1996 when it became law. But um, most of our information that, in my experience, that is sent between caseworkers and foster parents is done via email or text message. And neither of those are secure. Uh, most people are surprised to learn that. Um, so SMS messages are actually sent by most carriers unencrypted over the internet. And um, email, um, although you may access your email via an HTTPS connection, whether it's Gmail or whatever, the connection between the email servers themselves are actually not encrypted. So when you send um, someone's medical form to a, um, to a worker, um, and they're actually violating HIPAA every single time. And you know, you're putting social security numbers, you're putting medical history, you're putting all of this information for some really vulnerable kids out there on the web for anybody to see. So what we did with Foster Garden, the web portal feature, is we created a secure means to communicate with your um, caseworker. Um, how we send information in the healthcare IT world is um, we will send a link instead of the actual information. Then we will use that link to exchange the information securely um, via a secured server using SSL. We do something similar in Foster Garden. So each child um, gets assigned a web portal link. And that web portal link um, then you know, creates a unique link for that child and you can then provide that to a caseworker, a GAL, um, whomever sh should have access or is allowed to have access to um, that child's profile. And then they can see the foster child profile um, via their web browser through a secure connection. They can download um, a, a photos that you uh, uh, put in their file, you can download, so like you could document bruises, scratches, injuries, um, property damage, um, sleep space, um, you know, anything like that. You can put all those photos in there. You can attach medical forms, um, consents, school forms, report cards, you know, scan those in, put them in the, uh, on Foster Garden. And then you, the, the social worker can just use this link, go in, go into their profile and download those at any time and put them in their own files. Now, um, and then, uh, let me interrupt you real quick. One feature I noticed too, and a lot of people really, I think I'll appreciate it, is as foster parents, we live in a glass house. Like everyone, we have people coming in, seeing our life every day. There's just no way to get around it. But there, there's the features on Foster Garden that you can make things pri a log private if you wanted to, like so. Absolutely. So you kind of take control. It, it's your life still, and you control what people see. Absolutely. So in some instances, it might not be appropriate to even give the web portal link to a caseworker. Um, that can be um, revoked at any time. All you have to do is check a box, and you can generate a new portal link. 
and then that is secret only to you. So you don't have to give that out. But if you have a good working relationship with your caseworker, if your caseworker is tech savvy and you would real and you know, this great secure way of sending information back and forth, great. You can they'll also be able to see all the foster child log entries, like you said. But if there's a foster child log entry you need to mark as private, we provide the mark as private feature. Perhaps you need to document the fact that the social worker isn't coming out to the house for, for caseworker visits. And th where this is really important is, you know, um, there's always a, usually a governing agency um, that you need, might need to report this to either the supervisor, but if the agency itself isn't being responsive, um, you know, and that's another, that comes again from being an experienced foster parent. So many foster parents deal with issues like this. Um, there are so I'm gonna first want to say there are so many great social workers out there and caseworkers that do amazing things every day, but unfortunately there's always a bad apple, and as a foster parent you're going to experience those. You need to protect yourself and you need to protect your placements, and the best way to do that is with documentation. So recording when. GALs don't come out for home site home visits. You get a phone call before the before the court hearing, and they ask you how the kids are. Well, you know, for the most part, that's not. I mean, at least in our jurisdiction, that's not allowed. They're supposed to visit the house and see the kids looking well and being well and at the children and see their sleep space. So if they just called you before court, now you can make a log entry. It'll be date and time stamped by our server. And if you do need to report that to a governing body of whether the GAL or the social worker or DHHS or um, BCAL, which we would be in Michigan, then you have this detailed record that is has a lot more weight because it's been stamped by a third party. You're you know you're not um, creating a log at the last minute. You know it has it has um, the weight behind it because no one can change those dates and times. We know that this has been a pattern of time, a pattern of behavior happening over a period of time. This program, even with the new things that you need to, you're trying to do and improve things and update things, it's very robust from what I've seen. Um, so I think what surprised me the most is I, I can tell that, that it, you're really in it to help foster parents. Tell us Tell us about pricing for this and how someone goes to sign up. Well, um, we prayed and thought about the price point a lot. Um, we understand that most foster families are very limited means and um, we appreciate that. So our price point is right now $4.99 a month and, um, and we wanted to have like a, a really simple service model where um, you get the whole deal for one very affordable price, something that um, you could see a return on investment very, very easily or quickly, like I said, with one reimbursement not expiring or saving you, you know, for a month, which I'm sure it would it save it saved my wife way more than an hour a month. She thanks me every few days, and and I know we've had at least one special reimbursement that that didn't expire because of it. So. Um, well, and I mean, was... it's crazy to me because I'm sitting there thinking about how many foster parents I know that they'll, they'll go to McDonald's one one night a week or something like that just to just to not have to cook. But I mean, that's four ninety five. That's one value meal. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And we th we thought about that. We want to keep the the value high and the cost very very low, as low as possible. Um, we'd love to see you know a large community. Everyone. We want everyone to have access to it. Um, that's that's really important to us. Like I said, it's it's not some um, giant money making scheme or anything like that. I want to provide the maximum value to foster families. I'm very passionate about this. Um, you know, um, I, it's like I said, we thought about a lot about the price point, and we wanted to make it very accessible for every family, every foster family. And we understand again that many many foster families in our experience are of of very limited means and they give very very much of themselves and their time and the money that they do have um, they give a lot so to ask even more I think would be unfair fantastic Nick thank you so much for uh, talking with us um, again if you if you're watching this video um, make sure to go to fostergarden.com check it out uh, if you're a new foster parent or a season one 
you're going to really appreciate this product and you need to get on board with it now because um, it's going to save you a lot of time and hassle and help you take care of those kiddos and uh, give them the love and attention that they really need for their, their trauma and uh, different things they're going through. So thank you very much, Nick. Thank you.